Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of my video blog series. I am your host Nick Renard and today we will be talking about vanity metrics versus performance metrics in terms of search engine marketing and I'm going to be reviewing some examples in AdWords so I have some I have some uh, slides with uh, examples for you to review here. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, we'll talk about uh, the definitions between what a vanity metric is and what a performance metric is. And actually, it's just kind of a f for fun exercise. I typed into Google uh, vanity metric definition and performance metric definition, and these are what they wrote. I, th I think they're actually they're actually pretty accurate, uh, especially the vanity one. Vanity metric. It says vanity metrics are things like registered users, downloads, and raw page views. They're easily manipulated and do not necessarily correlate to the numbers that really matter. I like that definition because it's essentially saying that vanity metrics are not something that you should be interpreting as telltale of, uh, of uh, good performance or bad performance. Performance metrics are going to be the opposite of that and the definition that they came up with was a performance metric is that which determines an organization's behavior and performance. Performance metrics measure an organization's conversions and performance, which I think is a little redundant to say that performance, me performance metrics measure an organization's performance, but uh, it is what it does. Uh, and, and this is something that we tell all of our clients is so important. And I think one of the, it's also one of the major things that differentiates our company from other companies is that we do always stay focused on the performance metrics and we really try to filter out the vanity metrics. Now there are uses for vanity metrics and I have a lot of blogs that I've written about many of the vanity metrics uh, which we'll go over today. So th it's not that they're useless, it's that uh, when, we're, when we're talking about whether a campaign or an account or a platform or whatever is performing well or not performing well vanity metrics are not going to be telltale of performance whereas performance metrics are are something that we can look at and determine just from that metric whether or not this campaign is doing well so what I'm going to be doing for each one of these slides that I go through is I'm going to give you an example of an actual account uh, I, I used a, an example of one of our accounts over the last uh, two months worth of data. The data itself isn't going to be all that relevant. I'll just be talking about how we should be interpreting that data and we'll classify each uh, each of the columns that I'll be reviewing as either a vanity metric or performance metric. I'll be giving it a scale, uh, an average rating of importance on a scale of 1 to 10. And I'll also talk, you know, I'll, I'll ramble for, for a bit and uh, any kind of additional notes that I think are relevant. Uh, yeah, I'll go ahead and review that stuff with you guys too. So let's go ahead and start here. So here's the table that I am going to be using. And we're going to start with cost here. And what I want to review with you first is... Uh, you can see each one of these columns here. I have cost, clicks, impressions, average cost per click, etc., etc. Each one of these columns, this is kind of the core columns that I look at whenever I'm in any given account. So just to start off saying, even if I give one of these things a very high score or a very low score, uh, it, it doesn't necessarily mean that I only look at this or I never look at this. I look at all of these metrics every single time I go into an account. So I, I think one of the one of the um, variables I actually give a score of 1 out of 10, just because the score is so low doesn't mean that it's not important. It means that in terms of performance or determining performance, uh, it doesn't have as much weight as some of the other ones. So it doesn't mean that it's not an important variable. It's it's still important. And and just because a metric is a vanity metric doesn't mean that we shouldn't be looking at it. It just mean it just means that there are different applications for it than determining uh, good performance versus bad performance. So the first one here is cost. And cost I gave a seven out of ten. And the reason that I gave cost a pretty high score of 7 out of 10 is because, uh, and you can see the note at the, at the bottom here, it says higher spend equals higher priority. And that's that's very true. The, if we have a, uh, a keyword that is spending, uh, I don't know, let's say $100 a month. Um, and then we have another keyword that spends $1,000 a month. Now, that keyword 
that spends a thousand dollars a month is going to be more important than the keyword that spends a hundred dollars a month because any changes or improvements that we can make with that keyword whether we're increasing the bids or or decreasing or whatever um, it's going to have a higher impact on the account because it consumes more of the budget now keywords with lower spend aren't necessarily not important it just means that um, you know there's less data to work with and you can see that the second note that I have here is statistical significance a campaign for example this first campaign that is thirty thousand dollars worth of spend in it there's definitely statist statistically significant data in that campaign because it's spent so much it's gotten over ten thousand clicks uh, we can definitely be sure that that data is very 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 accurate to the 99th percentile now with some of these bottom campaigns, the ones that have spent uh, like $100 or $400, we can't necessarily be sure that some of those statistics are, 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 um, are going to perform that way over a long period of time, just because there's a very low amount of spend. So just by this number of costs, being able to see the difference between $30,000 or $100 gives us uh, an idea of how um, of whether or not we should be taking the rest of the data in in these other columns with a grain of salt or not um, with this up uh, and again just reiterating the higher dollar account we can be sure that these metrics are pretty accurate with the lower dollar uh, campaigns we're not as sure that those are going to perform like that over a longer period of time so that's cost seven out of ten uh, Let's go ahead and go to the next slide here, which is clicks, and I also included impressions in here. Uh, impressions I actually don't really look at all that often. Um, it's more of a metric to determine the click-through rate, but uh, I, I threw it in here because they're kind of, I don't know, they're kind of similar. Um, the overall score that I gave for clicks and impressions is 3 out of 10, and I definitely classify clicks as a vanity metric. Now. Um, we look at clicks and impressions for the same reason that we look at cost or you know kind of the same reason that we look at cost and and that's to determine statistical significance if something has had uh... the first time we were looking at uh... uh dollar amounts now if we were looking at a campaign that had a hundred dollars worth of spend here i'll actually go back to the previous slide if we're looking at a campaign with a hundred dollars worth of spend like this one here that's not going to be that looks not statistically significant compared to this this one that has thirty thousand um, however if we're looking at two campaigns both of them have a hundred dollars worth of spend but the average cost per click in one of them is two dollars and the average cost per click in another one is five cents now that means that within that hundred dollars if you're getting five cents per click you're gonna have a lot of clicks so that means that means that the statistical significance of that one is going to be significantly higher even though both those campaigns have the exact amount of spend so uh... cost is similar to clicks and impressions in that um, you know we're, we're looking at it to determine whether or not there's statistic, statistical significance with the data that we're viewing so we're, we're confirming whether or not we should be um, you know over or under analyzing certain other columns in the account uh, the reason that it has a lower score than cost is just because budget is so much more important to people than clicks you know if I if if, if a client tells me that I want to be spending four thousand dollars a month and then I come back and I tell them you know I I, I, I accidentally spend eight thousand dollars this month they're gonna be pretty pissed at me however if a client says that my target is you know four thousand clicks and I say that I got them 5,000 clicks or 6,000 clicks it just has a little bit less weight um, most people tend to look at things in terms of dollars not in terms of clicks even though they can be kinda used interchangeably so cost is definitely something that I think is is more important um, just because clicks can be I mean it, it, it can change so much you know a display a display network click can cost downwards of like five cents like in the example we were just talking about and then there are certain search network keywords that can cost up to like fifty dollars for a click so talking about paying for like a hundred clicks at a hundred dollars a click versus paying for a hundred clicks at five cents a click there's a big difference there so cost is a little more accurate in terms of you know how how consuming um, any given keyword might be in an account anyways let's move forward here next one is average cost per click which I gave a score of 5 out of 10 and I still classify cost per click as a vanity metric it's a little better than um, 
than the uh, uh, I'm sorry than the the clicks or impressions. Um, the reason that I look at cost per click is um, if if we're looking to for example, we can look in this account here. Uh, we we see some of these campaigns have cost per clicks of like three dollars, and then there are other campaigns that have cost per clicks of sixty cents. Now, if all else is equal between like you know this campaign where the cost per click is three dollars versus the cost per click being a dollar or sixty cents or significantly lower than that, then what we can do in terms of uh, account optimization is uh, if we're trying to cut spend or we're trying to reallocate spend from underperformers towards the good performers, um, we can we can try to bring down the cost per click of our higher cost per click keywords. Now something something has a cost per click of fifteen dollars and we could reduce the cost per click of that keyword by ten percent, that's going to have a much larger effect than reducing the cost per click on a keyword that has, is like one dollar. Um, that's pretty straightforward. So you can see that the first note here it says budget allocation that higher cost per click equals less overall traffic within a, a given budget. So if we have a budget of five thousand dollars a month and our average cost per click in one campaign is fifteen dollars the other one is one dollar uh, being able to make any optimizations on those fifteen dollar clicks is just going to have a higher impact on the overall um, you know what we can get out of that five thousand dollar a month budget so that's the reason that cost per click is or that I view that cost per click being important <clears throat> and the um, the last note here is that average cost per click is actually uh, directly um, it directly correlates with quality scores so if you have a if you have a quality score of 10 or a quality score of 1 uh, that's directly going to affect what your cost per click is so if you can look at trends over time of cost per click of seeing like okay the cost per click has increased slightly over the course of you know 2016 or decreased uh, you could actually kind of determine what's happening with your quality scores assuming all else is equal uh, just by um, you, you can see if your quality scores are going up or up or down which is kind of cool uh, just by looking at this metric so yeah I think that's kind of cool um, Google doesn't have a great way of looking at like quality scores across a whole entire campaign or whole entire account. So cost per click is kind of my my second best variable that I use here. Anyways, moving forward, uh, the next one here is uh, click through rate, and I actually gave this one a one out of ten. And a lot of people will will see this and immediately disagree and say that click through rate is amazing and so important. Again. Just because I give something a low metric does not mean that it is not an important variable. In fact, click-through rate is actually the most important variable. You can see the note down here. It says that uh, click-through rate is relative, not comparative, between campaigns and industries. And the exception to this 1 out of 10 score here is with ad rotations. When you're talking about an A-B split test between two different ads, click-through rate is actually the most important thing that you could be looking at. And the reason is that if, if you're ad A, for example, if you're, if you're split testing two ads, ad A and ad B. Ad A has a click-through rate of 4% and ad B has a click-through rate of 2%. That's insanely important to know because that being said that one of the ad has, it gets clicked on twice as often as another another ad. So you definitely want to be using whatever ad copy or, um, you know, what, whatever you're using to get that uh, twice as many clicks, you definitely want to be emphasizing that as much as possible. So CTR is important, but it's not important in terms of determining the performance of a campaign, which is why we classify it as a vanity metric. All right, uh, that's about all I have to say about click-through rate. Um, I guess the last note that I want to put in here is going off the uh, CTR being relative and not comparative. Uh, I've had clients come to me and you know give me a budget, give me the keywords that they want to bid on and all that stuff, and then they say, uh, something along the lines of I want to see at least four percent click-through rate and that's that's such um, it's such a like an unimportant metric to be held to just because click-through rate it being at four percent or eight percent or ten percent or two percent or zero percent it's not important what's important with your click-through rate is uh, you, you shouldn't be comparing it to other industries and other campaigns because it's going to be drastically different and there's no way of really there's no like um, 
healthy medium. You can see even the click-through rate in this campaign. Some of the campaigns have click-through rate up upwards of 22%. Some of them are close to 0%. That doesn't necessarily mean that each of those campaigns is doing good or bad. What we try to do with click-through rate is just continually improve it over time. And, that, and it's going to be uh, only relative to what your click-through rate was within that campaign last month or the month before that. So with this first campaign, for example, it has a click-through rate of 4.38%. Next month, my goal with that campaign would not be to try and get it up to this other campaign's 22%. My goal would just be to make sure that I have more than 4.38% CTR by the following month. Uh, because it, the, the important thing is that it's always increasing. It doesn't matter what it's currently at, but if, if next month it's better than the previous month and the following month it's better than that and it keeps improving over time, the reason that that is important is because click-through rate is hands down the most important or most dominant variable within Google's algorithm for determining quality scores, which is why we value it so highly when we're um, when we're doing ad rotations. So, getting your click-through rate to slowly improve over time is going to do. I mean, it's going to have the, the most weight on improving your quality scores. So it's 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 very important to keep click-through rate in mind. It's just in terms of determining performance it means next to nothing, which is why we give it that one out of 10. So yeah, anyways, that's about all I have to say on click through rate. So let's go ahead and move ahead here. All right, <clears throat> now on to our first performance metric here, which is conversions or cost per conversion or pretty much any piece of data that involves conversions. So uh, cost per conversion, uh, if you have conversion values for your your conversions, like you you know uh, let's say like you say that a quote form is worth two hundred dollars to you or a phone call is worth a hundred dollars to you then you can use something like conversion value divided by cost or um, yeah you get the idea anything that has to do with conversions definitely a performance met metric definitely ten out of ten um, conversions the first note I have here is conversions are the imp the epitome of performance um, it, I mean it's the most important thing if you're a business and you're trying to get e-commerce sales or you're trying to get uh, phone calls so that your sales team can uh, generate revenue for your company that's what's going to turn into dollars for your company so that you can you can make profit your business can keep running etc uh, conversions extremely important I don't I don't really think I have to say too much about that because I think it's pretty straightforward uh, one thing I will say is that you should be making um, weekly changes in your accounts based on your conversion data so if if you look over um, you know the last seven days worth of data for example the data we're looking at right now is over the course of two months for this particular client but um, I, I would recommend coming in here every every week looking at the last seven days and giving a little a little boost to the ones that did well so any you know let's say your threshold for cost per conversion is like fifty dollars any keyword that had a cost per conversion of that was better than fifty dollars or I guess it would be lower because a lower CPA is better. Um, then you would want to give that a you know a small little boost, like five or ten percent increase on their bids. Whereas something that would you know didn't meet that threshold or is quote unquote an underperformer, you want to be reducing bids on that. Now you don't only want to be looking at, and I'm probably tangenting a little far off here and getting into like account optimization stuff, but um, you don't. You don't only want to look at seven-day increments. You also want to look at larger time frames. Um, we, I've written a couple blogs about uh, keeping an eye on your date ranges in the past. Uh, it's important to also look at how things are trending over longer periods of time as well. So while it's important to be looking at the last seven days and you know giving boost to the things that are doing well and to kind of keep things current, it's also important to look over like. <clears throat> for example, it's July right now. I may go into an account and look at all of the data from January 1st to you know now in July, and um, you know if something has been spending money and just not converting over a six-month period, even if it's not spending that much a month, because something may not spend very much over the course of a month or even seven days. So our seven-day view, it's going to kind of fly under the radar just because it doesn't spend a lot, but. If it spends over the course of six months, it may actually be spending a lot of money and not converting. So we want to, we want. It's important to be looking at longer than seven-day date ranges as well when you're making uh, uh, bid optimization changes based on uh, conversions. All right, moving forward here. 
Uh, and this is actually our last one. This is uh, Impression Share, which I also la uh, gave a, um, a score of 10 out of 10 and labeled it as a performance metric. Um, now, <laughs> it's it's actually kind of uh, some people would would uh, hear that and disagree with me immediately because uh, impression share doesn't actually it's not actually telltale of performance uh, it doesn't tell you how much how many sales you're making that being said um, making bid optimization changes on your accounts based on impression share is hands down uh, except for conversions, it, it it's the most important thing you could be making changes off of, and it's also one of the most important things that you could be aware of uh, in terms of budget allocation. Because if uh, if you have a campaign that has a hundred percent impression share, for example, this branded campaign right here has a ninety four percent impression share. Um, let's say that campaign spends a hundred dollars a day, and uh, you're like, okay, this campaign's doing extremely well. I want to spend ten times as much money in there. Well, your impression share is already 94%, meaning that you're already showing 94% of the time that you could be showing. So you can't spend 10 times more in there because there's only 6% left for you to show. So you could spend like a little bit more, you know, that last little 6%. Uh, but yeah, that, that that's why impression share is so important because it tells you how much more or less you could be spending in a campaign. Now, the more that you spend on a campaign, the more diminishing returns that you're going to see. And the reason that that happens is because to get into those higher ad positions to show in the number one position versus the number three position, or not at all, it's going to cost you more as you go up the ranks like that. What that does is it increases your cost per click. Uh, if your cost per click is higher, so if you're paying $10 a click versus $5 a click, at a certain point, that keyword is no longer going to be profitable for you if the cost per click keeps increasing. So impression share is extremely important to look at because it uh, it tells you, it gives you an idea of where you're going to start running into diminishing returns in terms of your ad spend. Um, now, everyone always, I, I get this a lot where people say, I want to show for you know this keyword 100% of the time. Showing 100% of the time for a keyword is easy to do. Set $1,000 bids on the keyword and let it run. You're going to show number one every single time. That being said, that doesn't mean that that's profitable for you. In fact, we very, very often do not want to be showing 100% of the time. The sweet spot for impression share is around 70%. It's a really rough estimate. If, you're, if your total impression share is about 70%, if you try to go any higher than that, you're probably going to run into some pretty steep walls of diminishing returns. So you probably don't want to be spending too much more than that. Um, and anything under that, like if you're sitting at like 40% impression share, then you can probably increase closer to 70%. It, 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 um, kind of gives you an idea of how much more you could be spending in that campaign. Um, the two reasons that you would lose impression share, the first one would be uh, getting outranked, which means that someone either has a higher bid than you or a higher quality score than you or both. And then the other one is losing impression share to budget. And losing impression share to budget happens because people have budget caps on campaigns. So you have a... Um, if you have a limit of spending a hundred dollars a day and your campaign spends a hundred dollars by noon then the campaign shuts itself off and then any click that could have happened between noon and the end of the day is considered to be impression share lost to the budget because you didn't you didn't have more money to spend um, yeah impression share is extremely important um, it tells you where you're getting outranked it tells you if you need to be expand if you're losing a ton of impression share to budget then it means you need to open up your budget or lower your bids um, I also have average position included in here uh, average position is uh, it's similar to impression share but not nearly as important average impression or I'm sorry average position by itself is actually not all that important uh, However, let's say you have an ad that sh always shows in the number three position 100% of the time. What that means is that you would have a search impression share of 100%, but your average position would be three. So that means that you could still bid higher to try and show in a higher average position, but your impression share isn't necessarily going to increase. So even though that 
they're kind of similar and that generally as your impression share increases so does your average position they're, def they're definitely directly correlated it doesn't necessarily mean that you sh you know you, you should only be looking at impression share average position is just kind of that additional variable that is also kind of relevant um, in terms of you know determining where your ads are showing all right, um, moving on here. So a recap of all these metrics, the vanity metrics. We have cost, uh, clicks and impressions. We have average cost per click. Um, and actually, I may I, I may have um, been mistaken in giving average cost per click only five out of ten. Maybe the cost and average cost per click should be switched, uh, just because average cost per click. And I always say that anything that has a denominator is usually more important than variables that don't. So like cost per conversion or cost per click or anything that's divided by another variable is usually more telltale of performance. So, um, but anyways, these are these are arbitrary and. <laughs> also situational um, and then we have click-through rate with a very low uh, vanity metric score uh, the only exception being with ad rotations where it turns into a 10 out of 10 and it becomes extremely important um, and then our performance metrics here the two most imp uh, important performance metrics that you should be making changes on in your account are your conversion data and your impression share data all right anyways uh, Thanks for watching. Uh, I hope that you guys find this information useful. Feel free to post any questions, comments in the comment section below, and I will see you guys next week. Happy advertising.